for today's lesson. Starting off with discussing and applying the annotation tool. We're then going to discuss and apply the layering tool. And lastly, we will round up this lesson by building on our skill set of AutoCAD and the know-how that we've already established along the way. Here is the quote that I have for you for today. Keep strong and always interior. You may be starting to think, but why are we getting so technical? Let me tell you, without technical, we have no design. Technical drawing is so super important on our design process and journey. But that's not to say that we're forgetting about the creative and creating. And therefore, keep strong and always interior. This is our last lesson for this chapter of technical drawing and you're going to need the same as you did for last lesson. So I'm going to ask you to grab your computer and make sure that you've got a solid internet or Wi-Fi connection. Again, I'm going to remind you, please do not go out and purchase a brand new computer and a license for AutoCAD. Please play around with the current trial version that I've showed you and showed you how to download in Module 3, Lesson 3. If, however, you are certain that this is the program for you and if you're interested in switching over from the free trial version to the full license, you can follow the link that I've added for you in your summary notes. However, if this is not the route that you're wanting to go, please do carry on practicing on the trial version that you have access to. From here, let's take a look at what we have lined up for today's lesson. Topic one, we are going to learn how to annotate the drawing. Topic two, we are going to layer the cake. We're going to add layers to our drawing. And topic three, we're going to put all of this together as we look at how to create our very own drawing. Right, let's not waste any more time as we get into our very first topic, annotating the technical drawing. Annotation is where we begin this lesson. Did you know that there is an actual tool set for annotating your drawings on AutoCAD? If you did know about this or you've seen it before, can you tell me where the annotation tool set is located on your AutoCAD interface? First things first, we're going to make sure that you remember exactly what the AutoCAD user interface is and where that sits on your AutoCAD screen. This is typically what your AutoCAD user interface should look like. This is where all of your technical drawings will be created and set up. Your elevations, your plans, and your section drawings, no matter what the drawing type is, they are all going to be created right here with your tool palette on your screen. Here's a fun tip. The user interface is also known as your UI or referred to as the UI, user interface. Look at us getting all cool and technical with our abbreviations. As we've learned in previous lessons, we're able to set up and change certain preferences on the AutoCAD user interface or the setup. Elements like your background color, ribbon placement, and tool location. This is great for some who like to get creative with their workspace, but do not fear if you're like me and want to leave the workspace as is, as CAD has a variety of pre-saved workspace setups that we can use so we don't confuse ourselves even further. This is called the predefined workspace. If you're opening up your drawing and something is looking a little bit different, you're going to navigate to that predefined workspace option, the preset, and select the one that suits you best. All the hard work done in one simple click. Let's take a look at how you go about changing or locating the predefined workspace. So as you can see, this is my AutoCAD setup. I'm going to navigate my mouse to the quick access toolbar or workspace menu, as you can see in the right corner of my screen, select that and choose one of the following. These are the presets, the predefined workspace setups. I'm going to click on 3D basics. And as you can see, as I click, the whole screen changes the setup to accommodate 3D basic navigation and drawing. Let's try that again. I'm going back to my quick access toolbar and I'm going to select 3D modeling. As you can see, the entire screen changes to show a setup or accommodate a setup for 3D drawing. We still have our ribbon, but our ribbon has changed with different tools. I'm going back to my navigation menu and I'm going to show you a really cool trick. I can actually change my workplace and save one that I like best. And I'm going to give my one a name. So I'm going to call it Robin's Workspace and I'm going to give a date so I know exactly when I set it up. And from here, I'm going to click Save. Any changes I've made to my workspace or my interface is going to be saved in that location. From here, I can then also navigate back to my annotation bar and allocate what I want to see when I click that setting group. So I'm going to click Robin's workspace. And as I click there, you can see all I can see is my Robin's workspace. I can then customize my workspace. So as I click customize, 
it provides a whole variety of tools that I can choose to show on my toolbar or my interface and tools that I can remove. Just for our preferences, remember the drafting annotation, as you can see here, is the one that we're going to be using most. So that is located right at the top, drafting and annotation. And that brings us right back to our original user interface. Our UI or user interface is the master and brain of our AutoCAD program. The UI is made up of various sections. Let's take a look at what they are. Firstly, we have our application menu or our application button. Then we have our quick access toolbar. We then have our ribbon panel, and this is something that you should be quite familiar with at this point. We then have our user coordinate system, UCS, which we haven't touched on yet. Then we have our model space or workspace or our drawing window, as we have learned. And lastly, our navigation bar, and that's how we navigate or rotate around our screen. Right, from here, I'm going to bring your attention to the ribbon. What is the ribbon? I hope by now you all know exactly what the infamous AutoCAD ribbon is and what it looks like, as well as where it sits on your UI. The ribbon is the user interface element that contains various AutoCAD commands arranged in panels and tabs. It is the central location for all of your AutoCAD comments and commands. The tool set, if you will. These tabs are powerful, but incredibly useful. They have a panel of commands as well as options relating to any task that you need performed on your drawing. On your ribbon, you can expect to find the following tabs. You've got a drawing tab or drawing commands, modify tabs and commands, annotation, layers, properties, and blocks, as well as your groups. In our last lesson, we covered the drawing and modify command. And in today's lesson, we are going to cover annotation and your layering tools and your layering set of commands. Please remember that AutoCAD program is a vast and has a vast amount of information to investigate. However, for the purposes of creating a simple technical drawing, you're going to be good to go with the tool sets that we have covered in the last three lessons. These tools and sections are going to assist you in creating your simple technical drawing on AutoCAD. Right, so I'm going to give you a quick recap of what we've covered in our previous lessons. So this, my dear interior designers, is your AutoCAD interface. This is where you're going to be creating your technical drawings. Right now, I'm making little blocks on my drawing screen. And your drawing screen is typically where you would create all of your technical drawings or your interior design technical drawings. Right, up here is your ribbon. This is the famous or infamous ribbon that we've been discussing. On your ribbon is a variety of tools that you are going to use to create or construct your interior design drawing. In our last couple of lessons, we focused on the drawing section of the ribbon and the modify section. In today's lesson, we are going to look at the annotation section and our layering section. But before we do, let's do a quick recap of some of the tools we covered in our previous lesson. So we go to our drawing section. We had our line tool, polyline tool, circle, arc, and the hatch pattern. Right, so we navigate to our drawing section. Some of the tools we covered here were our line, polyline, circle, rectangle, and hatch pattern. Let's take a look at what each one does. So our line tool simply created a line. Our polyline did the same thing, except our polyline tool allows the object to become one entire object, whereas the line object, when creating the line object, the object, in fact, is not all connected. Each line is created as a separate line. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that by simply clicking delete on my keypad. We then had the circle, and that was simply creating the shape of a circle. We then had our rectangle, also simply creating the shape of a rectangle. And then an exciting tool, our hatch tool, which allowed us to hatch the object or shape that we were working on. And then with that, we were able to change the pattern that we hatched inside. So we can get a variety of different textures to showcase what we were actually drawing. So maybe we were doing a driveway section. We wanted to have a tiled driveway area or we were creating something with sand, and so we wanted to indicate that our hatch pattern was sand. Right, so as exciting as that was, we moved from there to the modify section. Remember guys, a handy tip that we did learn, as soon as you hover over one of the tools, a little blurb comes up explaining exactly what that tool does for us. So for example, on our modify section, we had move, we hover over move, and it tells us exactly what that tool can do. 
So your move tool will move an object a specified distance in a specified direction. So let's go ahead and click that. We click the object. We clicked enter or spacebar on our computer or right left click to accept the command. Click on the screen and then we shifted that object along the drawing page. Remember, if we click ortho, we can have free reign. Or if we clicked ortho, we can have quite a defined range of movement. And that applies to your line tool as well. Then we looked at rotate, which simply meant that we could rotate the object that we were working with. We then had erase, very simple. That means we erased whatever we were drawing. We then had copy, which was also great because we could copy our elements across without distorting the shape or size of the element that we were trying to copy. And then we also looked at the offset tool, which simply meant that we could offset a line, a specified distance away from it. So look, I'm using my rectangle, clicking offset, Let's say we want to offset 100, so I'm going to specify the distance of 100. I'm going to click Enter. I'm going to select the object. So now remember with AutoCAD, you also get prompted to what you need to do. So I'm going to select the object to offset. I'm going to move the cursor to the area that I want to offset and then select, and that's our offset. Right, so that was Draw and Modify. In today's lesson, we are going to be learning annotation elements and tools and your layering elements and tools. Annotation simply means to add annotation or notes to the drawing to aid and assist our drawing. And layers is like layering a cake. We are going to add a variety of layers, tool sets, colors, and commands to our drawing to make the drawing a little bit more readable and interactive. Right, with that being said, let's dive right in to our annotation and layers. Before we take another step further, I want to bring your attention to the object snap and ortho mode tool set. These little tricks and tools are going to be a massive lifesaver when creating your technical drawing. They're both located at the bottom right hand portion of the drawing screen. Let's take a look. Firstly, we've got our ortho, which is located right there. And then we've got our object snap, which is located right there. Your ortho mode, when turned on, is going to guide your line to create 90 degree line. So it's going to guide your line in a very straight position. Your object snap is going to allow you, when creating your drawing, to automatically snap to a line. There's also a setting or a set of settings that when right clicking on that icon, you can select what you're wanting your line to snap to. So are you wanting your line to snap to a middle section, a end section, a node, etc.? Let's take a look at how that's done. We are going to start off with our ortho mode. So I'm going to click on my drawing command tool, my line. I'm going to navigate to my drawing screen and I'm simply going to create a line. So I'm starting at the top, clicking at the top, moving my mouse downwards to create a downward line or a vertical line. And as you can see, I'm moving my mouse left and right, but it's creating 90 degree lines. It's not creating lines that are unstraight. Now watch what happens when I unselect ortho. So that there is your ortho mode. I'm unselecting it. And my line is now following exactly where my cursor is going. Let's take a look at that again. I'm selecting ortho, so I'm making sure ortho is on. And as you can see, no matter where I move my mouse, my line still is 100% straight or follows a 90 degree path. When I unselect ortho, my line becomes irregular or unstraight. And that is the logic behind ortho. So I tend to leave my ortho mode on when I'm trying to create any square or rectangular shape. And that's my ortho mode. Right, now let's take a look at our snap mode. Your snap mode is located in the same area and that's what your snap mode looks like. So I'm going to unselect snap to show you my tool here. I'm going to click polyline. It doesn't matter. You can use these icons to navigate any of your tool sets. They can assist with anything on your drawing. It's not particularly linked to the line or polyline. But for the purposes of this lesson, I'm going to show you using these tools in my drawing section. Right, so I'm going to my drawing screen and I'm going to hover over this little block that I've created, right? No green elements are popping up. Now I want to start my line, but I want my new line to be center to this line at the bottom of my rectangle. First things first, ideally what you're wanting to do is measure the line and then find out what that central point is and then make sure that when you select here or when you want to start your new line, you have to hope for the best that it is the central point, right? 
wrong. We actually have a tool that helps us do this. And that is called our OnSnap tool. So I'm going to select Snap to show you exactly what I mean. I'm going to start my drawing command polyline again, and I'm going to hover over the rectangle again. Can you see what's happening? I'm getting a variety of green little icons popping up, encouraging me to start the line at these points. So one of the op options is my perpendicular line. I can snap to a end point. I can snap to a perpendicular line. Or my favorite, I can snap to a midpoint. And that's what your snapping tool does. It allows the line to snap to a direct part or portion of your object. So that's great because it gives me a predefined 100% accurate midpoint. And I'm snapping to that. And I'm going to snap to that midpoint. So I've successfully divided this very irregular rectangle in half by simply selecting my snap mode. And a really handy feature here, if I go to my snap or navigate to my snap section, I'm going to right click on that. A toolbar or property menu pops up. This simply means or is indicating what I'm allocating that snap tool to, add, to snap to. So it can snap to an endpoint, a midpoint, a center point, etc., etc. On this toolbar, you want to select exactly what you're allowed to snap to. So maybe you don't want your snap tool to allow you to snap or pick up the center point. I'm going to simply untick that. Right. That can be applied to any element on this. But for my purposes and the purposes of your drawing, I suggest that you make sure that you're snapping to center points, nodes, so that could be endpoints or nodules, the intersection, you don't necessarily need an extension line, and your perpendicular line is quite important. And that is exactly how those properties work on your tool panel. That brings us to our next step, our annotations, the mastermind, the language to our drawings. Bring on the annotations. But can anyone tell me what an annotation actually is? Here's a clue. It's something we use to add detail where detail may be lacking from the drawing. Annotations are the elements that add to our drawing, a technical drawing specifically in our case. To add detail and to add value, increasing the value and quality of information that that particular drawing has. Annotations can come in the form of notations, simply meaning text, objects, and dimensional measurement. Any form of explanatory element that can be used to add information to our drawing are your annotations. Let's break some of the common forms of annotations up as we look at them in a bit more detail. Types of annotation. We first have our notes and text. We then have our dimensions, which is adding measurement to a space or object. We then get elements called hatch patterns and symbols. So hatch pattern is adding texture or visual to the element and symbol is adding notations as well. And then we get notations in the form of tables, blocks and call outs. For the purposes of our lesson, we are going to break down notes and labels first. Notes and labels are your text description. So they come in the format of text and description. These are like paragraphs or short sentences used to describe the element or section of the drawing that you're trying to describe or explain. It could refer to a heading or it could have small bursts of factual information. For example, you might want to tell the contractor that the material of the table that he needs to build is in fact timber. You may have already hatched the drawing in to show that it's timber, but to just to be extra clear, because remember precision is key, you need to add a little note next to the table with an arrow showing what you are referring to, stating that the table is timber and more specifically the actual timber that you're wanting to use. So maybe you're wanting to use an oak or a pine. So in your little burst of information, you would state that the table is in fact a timber pine table. You may also want to add a heading stating that the drawing that you're looking at is a plan view, an elevation view, or a section view. Then we break dimensions down a little bit further. Dimensioning simply means to add measurement to your drawing. Now, we are lucky as we've covered the concept of dimension and measurement in our first two lessons of this module. The dimension line is the tool that we use to add correct measurement to our drawing or our space. A dimension is the visual element that we use as draftspeople or engineers and architects to indicate measurement of a space or object. Both dimension and measurements are what we're going to use to assist us in achieving accuracy in our drawings. Because again, accuracy is key. We as designers, we use our technical drawing to set up our drawing communication to the client and manufacturer. 
On these drawings, we will use the dimension line to add measurement, value, and information to our relevant section or drawing. Right, guys, we're going to take a quick brain break. Grab your sketchbooks and start drawing up a chair, any chair in front of you. Once you've done that, you're going to pretend that you are the manufacturer and you've just received that drawing for that chair. It might be a really pretty and well sketched drawing. However, you couldn't exactly manufacture this chair to the accuracy that it should be created to, right? There's information missing. As this is a quick exercise, think about it off the top of your head. What is the first piece of information you would look for when starting to manufacture this chair? I would say that it would be a tie between the size of the chair and the material makeup of that chair. So how are you actually going to be able to add that information now? With our dimensions and our notations, our text and measurements. You can finish your drawing off by grabbing a tape measure and measuring the size of that chair. Add that information to your drawing as well in the form of our dimension to your sketch. You can also add a little note on the side of your drawing explaining in very precise terms what material that chair is made from. This concept is going to need to be applied to every single one of your drawings. And that is exactly the concept of adding notation and dimension to your drawing to boost the information value of your drawing packs. And that is the best part about creating your drawings on a CAD program like AutoCAD and many others. It's that they are tools that make the process of adding notations to your drawings much easier, faster, and even more precise than when creating your drawings manually. From here, I'm going to show you exactly why and how as we start to investigate the annotation toolset on our AutoCAD interface and ribbon. But first things first, can anyone tell me where the annotation command is located on the ribbon? We have had a look at this, but can you remember? Pop your answers into your Morpheus text box or make a note for yourselves in your sketchbooks. Is it on our drawing screen? Is it on the command bar line? Or is it located on the ribbon? This is what your annotation toolset looks like and where it is located on your ribbon. I hope you got that right. If you didn't, don't worry. You can update your notation for yourself in your sketchbook. Much like the drawing tool set, it has a variety of different choices for annotation of one's drawings. In your annotation tool set on your ribbon, you've got the following options. You can add text using these tools, dimension, you can add a table to your drawing, and even add a leader. But for the purposes of this lesson, we are going to focus our attention to text and dimension. Starting off with our text tool. As you can see, that is where our text tool is located on our drawing ribbon in our annotation section. This is the tool that you would use to select when you need to add notes to your drawing. When selecting this drop down, you are able to select from two options of adding text. Firstly, you have your multi line text, and then you can also add a single line text. These two are quite different, but both add text to a drawing. One would use single line text when you need to create one or more lines of text, ending each line when you press enter. Each text line is then an independent object that you can relocate, reformat, or otherwise modify. Whereas with your multi-line text, each line created in the paragraph is actually linked, hence the term multi-line, meaning many lines, and single line, singular line. Let me show you exactly how that works. So firstly, we are going to navigate to our annotation section on our ribbon, and that's where that is. We are going to click on the text, and remember if I hover over the icon that I'm wanting to select or the tool, it gives me an indication of what that does. As you can see, there's a drop down here. I'm going to select the drop down, and it gives me an option of both the multi-line text and the single line text. For the purposes of this lesson, we're going to select multi-line text. And then I'm going to go to my drawing window. As you can see, AutoCAD is prompting me to specify the first corner. So that means simply clicking on the screen where I want my text box to start. So I'm going to start selecting here. And then I'm going to roughly drag my window across the screen to indicate where I want my text to be. Don't worry about spending too much time here. You can change the size and the font later. The next prompt is to specify the opposite corner. So I'm going to select that. Once I've completed that, a text box appears. So this is where I'm going to start typing in my text. At the top here, you'll see there's a variety of options that allow me to change or modify my text. So it gives you a size. I'm going to make it for the purposes of this exercise 100 so that it's clear. I'm going to leave it at standard. I'm going to leave my text at Arial and I'm going to leave my color 
by layer for the time being. And then here I'm going to type in exactly what I'm wanting to type for my text or my annotation. So once I've typed the text that I want on my drawing, I'm simply going to move out of the text box and click anywhere on my screen to accept or end the function. So that's left clicking out of my screen. So now you'll see the text becomes really small or disappears. All you need to do is zoom in by scrolling upwards. Remember, we learned how to zoom. I'm going to scroll upwards into my text and there's my text. There I have it. Now I want to maybe change my text. Let's say I want my text to be in red. I go to the text box. I double click on that. I select my text by left clicking and dragging the mouse right over all the text that I'm wanting to change. And then we see here it did not change my text size. So here I'm going to make my text 100 and click enter. It automatically makes my text bigger. Now I want to make my text red. So I'm going to the color icon here. I'm clicking the drop down and I'm going to select red, but let's pick a nice red. So I'm going to go red orange. Let's say I want my text to be bold. I'm going to select the bold icon here. Maybe I want the top portion of my text underlined. So I'm going to select the top line, highlight the top line with my mouse or cursor, find the underlying optional tool and select that. And once I'm finished, once I'm happy with my text, I'm going to navigate slightly outside of the text window and click anywhere else on the screen to accept the command. And there you have it. That is how you add multi-line text. Now, it's a very similar method for adding single line text. Let's see how that's done. So again, I'm going to navigate to my ribbon to the annotation section. I'm going to hover over my text option, select the drop down and select single line text. And let's follow those prompts again. So I'm going to go somewhere onto my screen where it's a little bit cleaner. And I'm using my navigation tool set to do that. Here, my first prompt is to specify the starting point of the text. So again, I'm going to create a window. I'm going to start from the left and move to the right. And author is on, as you can see, so it's guiding my line. I'm moving it right across the screen and ending it randomly. It doesn't necessarily matter. As you can see, it allows me to start typing. So let's begin that, right? There you have it. That is my annotation. So I've got the annotation is key and my timber table and that's created in single line text. Let's see why this is different to my multi-line text. So again, on this command, I'm going to navigate outside of the drawing or typing window and I'm going to select my screen with my left click of the mouse and that accepts the command. It then starts a new single line text command. To exit that, I'm going to escape on my keypad and that gives me my single line text. Now, it's hovering over my multi-line text, which I'm not happy with, and it's much bigger, so I want to move it. So I'm going to select both of these lines, go to my Modify tool set and select Move, and move that along. And there you have it. That is your single line text. Now, remember the key with single line text is that as soon as you click enter to move to the next line, it breaks up the text so that each text line is a separate object. So as you can see, I'm selecting the top one. It's only highlighting the top one. Where I select the bottom one, it then only selects the bottom one. So each line is a separate object, whereas your multi-line text is one object. Next, we move to the dimension tool. And that is what your dimension tool looks like on your ribbon under your annotation section. This tool creates simple dimensions and types of dimensions with a single command. You're going to use this tool to add dimensions to objects or spaces within your drawings. To create a dimension, begin by selecting the dimension panel on the annotation tab of the ribbon. Next, you want to select the dimension dropdown and select the type of dimension that you're wanting to create. In the drawing, select the beginning and the end of the points for the dimension and then select the text placement and select or hit enter. Let's take a look at how that's done. So as you can see, I've created a simple rectangle on your screen by using the drawing tool set rectangle. 
And then from here, I'm going to dimension it. So my dimensions are located on my annotation tool set on my ribbon, as we know. And I'm going to select the dimension tab here. That's the tool that I'm going to be using for this lesson. On here, if I select the drop down, there's a variety of different dimensions that we can use. So we've got a linear dimension, an angled dimension, an angular dimension, etc. But for the purposes of this lesson and for your drawings going forward, we're just going to use our linear dimension. So I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to go to my drawing screen, navigate to my drawing window, and I'm going to hover over. And as you can see, my snap tool comes in handy here. So my cursor automatically snaps to the edge of that. So I'm going to select here. And as you can see, AutoCAD is prompting me to specify the first extension line or origin. So that's going to be my first extension line. Once I've selected that, we get another prompt to select the next, the second extension line. So that's going to be that endpoint because I'm wanting to get the length of this line. I'm going to select that by left clicking. And as you can see, a dimension line neatly pops up. Easy and handy, right? To place my text, I'm simply going to select on the screen where the text base sits. So I'm going to drag it up until I'm happy. And then I'm going to click outside of the dimension line to end or accept that command. We have some really handy tools here that are accessible to us. So if we're wanting to change the style or the setup of our dimension, we can. So what we do, similar to multi-line text, we select the dimension, always select the element that you're wanting to edit. So we're going to select the dimension. We're going to navigate to the drop down here where it gives us an idea of the dimension styles. Some of these styles are preset, but a majority of them you potentially won't have because these are my preset styles. So what we're going to do is we're going to navigate to the one that we like. As you can see, they're all preset, so they change accordingly. I'm going to navigate here and select that to change my dimension. Let's say, for example, that there might not be a dimension style that you like or one that suits your drawing. Question, how do we change that? Well, it's quite simple. AutoCAD allows us to manage or alter dimension styles, and it's quite easy. What you do is you navigate to the dimension property. So as you can see, I'm going to the dimension section in my ribbon. I'm going to select the drop down, and then I select manage dimension styles. From here, I'm going to select new because I want to create a new dimension style. Give your dimension style a name. You might want to put a date next to that just so that you know when that was created and then select continue. A modification panel is going to pop up. And in this panel, you're able to change all the elements relating to your dimension line. But for the purposes of this lesson, and in order not to confuse you any further, we're going to stick with our lines, symbols and arrows and text, starting with lines. Lines, you might want to change your color. You might want to change the line weight, give it a little bit of a thickness. You can suppress your dimension line or your extension line, as you can see. And what's really nice about this is you've got a viewing window that shows you all of your updates happening live. Carrying on from here, I'm going to leave everything as is, but if you're wanting to go further, you can change things like your base spacing. You might want to change your extension line to a dash dot line. You can update them all in this area here. You can load additional ones. I'm going to cancel that because I like mine the way it is. You can suppress extension line one and two. And as I said, you can see everything happening live here. Right, then we're going to move to our arrows and symbols. So for the purposes of your drawings, a closed arrow is really nice. Alternatively, here are a variety of options that you can change your arrows to. So you might want to do an open one that looks like that. You might have another element that you're just wanting a dot for, but for neatness and precision, I suggest keeping your closed arrow. Then we've got an arrow size option. So this is always nice to change because you always want quite a nice big arrow so that everyone knows what you're talking about. So for our purposes, I'm going to give it a 50 dimension, and then I'm going to move straight to text. And as you can see, our text height is really small. Our arrows are much bigger than our text, which we don't want. So I'm going to give our text size 100 dimension. And I think I'm going to color our text blue. I'm going to give it a blue color. That's just for us to see. You can give it whatever color you like. But for this, I like blue. It's much easier to see on the screen. We can change our text placement. We can center the text. 
we can put our text just outside the line. And for us, for now, I'm going to keep my text centered. And then I'm going to click OK and close. Right. As you can see, if we navigate to our dimension style, we have our style set and saved. So anytime we're wanting to reuse the style, all we need to do is navigate here, select, select the style and start creating our dimension line. See, everything's changed accordingly. And that's exactly how you dimension an object or space. So from here, if you want to carry on dimensioning, you select the dimension, you select the edge, and then you just follow the prompts. Then I'm going to delete this top dimension by selecting it and then navigating to delete on my keypad and then just deleting it. And there you have it. That is how I add dimensions to my drawings. Have you ever wondered what the key to a well-designed space is? Well, I have news for you. In your next lesson, we're taking these CAD drawings and we're going to learn how to create the most amazing, accurately and well-designed space plan with some very simple tricks and tools for the job. But no sneak peeks, I'm going to keep this lesson locked away until we've completed our technical touch. This is because our technical lesson is going to add so much value to our space planning lesson. So stay tuned. I know by now that you are very familiar with our AI bot Morpheus, but I would like to remind you that this lesson can be fun and interactive if you make sure that you're using Morpheus to his best. Give it a go. Type in your answers and ask him some questions. You're only going to surprise yourself. He's going to become even more intelligent the more you interact with him. So please do. From here, I'm going to move on to our second topic for the lesson, as it is an exciting one at that. The layers to our cake or the layers to our drawings. Yum, who doesn't love cake? I'm talking about a triple decker chocolate cream strawberry coolie layered cake. Yes, in baking terms, we are going to apply our baking terms to our technical drawings. Strange, but doable. I bet you didn't know that your drawings in fact have many layers to them. Ogres are like onions, right? Onions have layers. Everybody loves cake. Cakes have layers too. Sound familiar? Well, our drawings have layers, guys. Here is something for you to think about. What are layers? Think about this one as how it relates to your technical drawings. Try and explain it with relation to technical drawings. You can pop your answers into your Morpheus text box or make a note for yourselves in your sketchbooks. Why? Because this could very well be an assignment question. What is a layer? Layers are what we use in AutoCAD and many other CAD programs as an organizational tool within your drawing. For example, you may want to be able to separate external walls from internal walls. Each of these objects, the walls on your drawing, can be assigned to a layer, which could be color coded, layer type coded, line coded, etc. Layers can reduce the visual complexity of a drawing and improve performance by hiding information that you don't need to see at that particular moment. Have a look on your screen. This is a drawing that I have created of a hair salon in my AutoCAD program. Do you notice all the colors? Well, each color is significant of a layer. Now watch this. Let's for instance say that I don't want to see the furniture on this layout. I only want to see structural elements. Two clicks of my mouse and we don't see the furniture anymore. Voila, we don't see the furniture. This is because AutoCAD has an amazing function called freeze that allows us to turn our layers on and off depending on what we're wanting to see in that given drawing. This function enables us to allocate drawing types or drawing layers so that we only need to see what is absolutely necessary in that given moment. Before you start your drawing, you want to create your very own set of layers that relate to your drawing and help your drawing work optimally. In a house plan, you might create layers for the foundation, the floor, the doors, electrical fixtures, plumbing, and so on. How many layers do you create? Well, that's a very objective question, totally dependent on the designer. One drawing can have many layers, and others may only have one. And that totally depends on the complexity of that drawing or project. You might have to do a few dozen of layers. You can use each layer to draw a specific object type. For example, you can use a wall layer to draw your walls. You can use a furniture layer to draw your furniture and so on. Right, so now that we know what layers are, let's make sure that we know exactly where to find this amazing tool on our AutoCAD interface on the ribbon. As you can see, that is your layer toolset on your ribbon. This is where and what your layer toolset looks like. It's made up of various tools and located on the ribbon on the AutoCAD UI. 
We are going to use the layers to control the visibility of objects and to assign properties such as color and line type to these elements and lines. Objects on a layer normally take on the properties of that layer. So if you've got a layer that's allocated to a red color, the object sitting on that layer will be red. This makes it easy and nice and manageable to find all of the layers and objects within any given drawing. As we learned, this is the tool that we use to organize our drawing by adding layers to objects, shape, and line. Think about it as if it's color coding or a color coding tool. In our layer section, we have a variety of tools that one can make use of, but for today's lesson, we are going to look at the following. We're going to look at your layer properties to alter and modify layers. We're going to look at the lock and unlock tool properties, so you can lock your layer and unlock the layer. And then lastly, we're going to look at the freeze and unfreeze property, which is exactly what it means. Freeze and unfreeze a layer. Remember that there are many layer tools in this section, but not to confuse you, we are going to focus on these three, which are the most common to our process. Starting off with the layer property tool. This is the tool that we use to organize our set of layers. So it's a property set up for our layers. The layers command is used to control and manage the drawing in AutoCAD for different purposes. In many of our drawings and projects, we are required to create a set of layers having different properties for each one. For example, in our floor plan of a house, we might create separate layers for our doors, walls, and furniture. We can create many, many layers by specifying the name for the corresponding layer. So exactly like what I've just said, if you're creating a floor layer, you want to call it floor. If you're creating a window layer, you want to name it or label it windows. This is what the layer property command looks like when you've opened your AutoCAD setup. Each layer is visible in each line with the associated property types listed in columns above. Each property has a set of its own properties that can be changed to guide the layer on its functions. Here are some of the most important headings for our purposes. Firstly, we look at the name. The name. Give your layer a name so that you know exactly what layer you're referring to. Then we've got the little on icon with a little light bulb next to it. This means that you are deciding to turn your layer on or off for that particular drawing. Then we've got the lock layer, which means to lock a layer to a drawing so you can't edit it at all. Then next we have our plot heading, which means to print. So in AutoCAD, when someone suggests the term plot, it's typically meaning to print. So when printing the drawing, you can decide if that layer is actually going to print on your drawing or not. Then we've got the color section, which is really nice because we can give our layer a different color. And as you can see there, we then have a layer type, a line weight, a transparency, and a description. Right, so let me show you exactly what that looks like. We are going to navigate to our ribbon. Here's our ribbon at the top of our page. We're then going to move to our layers section because we've moved out of annotation. We're now in our layers section. And then as you can see there, we've got our layers property. You need to select that with your mouse. And then this is the layers property setup that will pop up, a little dialog box, right? So in your dialog box, we've got all of our headings that we've just covered. We've got our layer name, we've got the on or off setting, we've got a free setting, lock, plot, color, etc. moving from left to right. The name section of our layers is going to allow us to give our layer a name or edit the name. So as you can see, I've got a couple existing ones here, but we're going to ignore those for the time being, and we're going to create our own. So if you're wanting to create your own layer, which I suggest you do before you even start a project, you are going to navigate to this little icon here, new layer. You're going to left click on that to select, and you'll see a little blue dialog box comes up, which indicates your prompts you to give your layer a name. So let's call our layer Robin. So let's give our layer a name. We're going to call it floor. Right, and then I'm going to click outside of the dialog box to accept that. Right, on my drawing, I'd like my layer to be on, so I'm going to leave that light bulb on. I don't want my layer to be frozen. I'd like to see that layer, so I'm going to put it on. If I'm going to lock my layer, it means that it can't be deleted. So actually, in this case, I'd quite like that, so I'm going to leave that on. I would like my layer to be printed, so I'm going to make sure that that icon looks like it's on. And then for fun, I'm going to give my layer a color. So as I click on color, this is the little dialog box that pops up. I'm going to make my layer pink and click OK. Let's take a look at what it means to give a line type to our layer. So if I click on line type, this is the box that pops up. They've only got two options here for us. If we want to load more, we can. So click load. 
And these are all the different layer types that you can allocate to your layer. So let's do a dash dot for this time being. And I'm going to click OK. And then as you can see, my line type changes to a dash dot. Then we have the line weight from our previous lesson. As you know, that's the thickness of the line. I'd like my line to be quite thick. As you can see, it changes there. And then we're going to leave these sections for the time being because we don't really need them. They're not incredibly necessary at this point. Right, so you'll follow this process for the rest of your layers as I've done, as you can see. So as you can see, I've followed the same process, creating a variety of different layers for my drawing. And once I've finished creating my layers, I'm going to click the little X close icon on the styler box to close the layer property. To access those layers, I need to go back to my layers section on my ribbon, select the drop down here, the layers drop down. And as you can see, they're all listed right here for me on my screen. So when these layers are being used, they apply specifically when we are creating or constructing our drawing. So if I want to create a floor layer and I'm going to create a line for my floor, I'm going to go to my polyline or my line tool, navigate to my screen and create a polyline. As you can see, all the layer properties that we allocated to the floor layer are apparent on my screen. The layer is locked, as you can see the little lock icon pops up. The layer is in fact blue. And if we look at the thickness, the line thickness is by layer, and you can see it's slightly thicker than the rest of the lines. And that's exactly how we use our layers property. Next, we move to our freeze and unfreeze tool, and that's exactly what it looks like on your screen, indicated by the little pink arrow. This is really easy to identify as the icon is shaped as an icicle. The freeze tool is a tool that can be used to isolate a layer and hide it from the view that you're working on. AutoCAD does not display, plot, hide, render, or regenerate objects on this frozen layer. So it's really exciting. You can totally turn it off from a view. You will freeze the layer that you want to be invisible for long periods of time. I've added some extra reading for you on layers and layer states to your summary notes. So please do be sure to go and check this out. Right, so I'm going to show you exactly how to use that tool. For the purposes of this exercise, I've created a couple of lines on two different layers. I've created a line on the walls layer and then two lines or three lines on my windows layer. I'm going to navigate to my layers section on my ribbon, select the freeze icon, remember the icicle. I'm then going to be prompted to select an object on the layer to be frozen. So I would like my windows layer to be frozen. Remember, everything that is associated with this layer will then be frozen from the view of the viewer. So selecting and freezing, as you can see, it totally disappears. Not to fear, we can get it back by unfreezing the layer. Simply click on the layers drop down. As you can see, the frozen element is here. We unclick the freeze or thaw and they come back. Simple and easy. The next very handy tool that we look at on our layers section is the lock and unlock tool, the lock icon. And it's really easily identifiable as it's shaped like a lock. This is a tool or command that you'll use when you want to lock a layer in place. By locking a layer, you cannot erase or move that layer at all. It's really handy when working on large scale drawings with multiple layers that you want to make sure certain layers are not altered during the design process. I usually use this for my external or main walls. Let's take a look at how this is used or where it's found on our UI. As you can see on your screen, this is a drawing that I've created. It's a joinery drawing with a variety of different layers. So if I click my layer drop down, these are all the layers that are relevant or found in this drawing. So I haven't used them all, but all of them can be found in this drawing. Let's say for instance, I wanted to lock my joinery or furniture layer in place. I go to my lock layer tool. I'm then prompted to select the object or layer that needs to be locked. So I'm going to select my joinery layer. And as you can see, the screen goes dull. Let's see why. If I click on that, you can clearly see that that layer has been locked. Let's put that to the test as I try and erase that layer. It won't let me erase any object or line that is allocated to that layer. Really handy, but it will erase all the other layers around that. 
as you can see. Super handy. And there you have it. I've covered all of the important components to setting up and constructing a basic drawing. If you're wanting a little bit of additional reading, please go and have a look at your summary notes as I've added additional content. Moving on to our third core topic for today's lesson, putting all the components together. We are going to take what we've learned in the last three lessons and see how we can create our very own technical drawing. We are going to start by taking a really quick summary and recapping all of our lessons, three, four, and five, as we use what we've learned and build up on these skills to create our very own technical drawing. So let's take a look at our scenario to start off with. Harry, the client, he's your client now, would like you to create a floor plan of his bedroom. We have an approximate dimension as follows. The room is six meters wide by four meters long. There is a door that is centered to the four meter long wall and a window of one meter wide centered to the other four meter wall. We are now going to use the tools, tips and tricks learned from lesson three, four and five to complete this plan drawing for him on our AutoCAD program. Let's take a look and see how that's done. This is the process flow that I'm going to lay out for you to tackle this exercise. We're going to start off with opening up the drawing recapping everything we did and learned about opening up the AutoCAD program. We're then going to construct the drawing using our tools, drawing tools and modifying tools. We're going to add notations in our annotation section. We're going to add the dimensions also in our annotation section. And then lastly, we're going to save and print the drawing. Let's begin the process flow as we open up our AutoCAD drawing. To do this, you are going to navigate to the application menu. Mine has been saved to my desktop, so that's where I'm going. You may even want to pin it to your toolbar. So to open it, you're going to double click and then this little window is going to pop up. The application will begin to open. Give it a few seconds as it is a really large program and requires quite a lot of computer brain power. Once you've got the drawing open, you then want to save it. So navigate back to your application menu, click on that, go down to save as. Select that. You're then going to give your drawing a name. So make sure that you're saving it in a location that you know exactly where it is. So I'm going to save it to my desktop. And for the purposes of this lesson, I'm going to give my drawing a project name called Harry's Bedroom. And then I'd like to put a date with that as well. This is just to organize my drawings. And then from here, I'm going to click Save. And there you have it. Your drawing is now saved. You can begin constructing the drawing. Next on our list, construct the drawing. We are going to start off by creating a set of layers for our drawing. So as you can see, I'm navigating to my layers property and I'm going to navigate to the icon that says create a new layer. And then I'm going to create a variety of layers for the specific drawing. So my first one is going to be my walls. I'm going to then create a windows and doors layer. And then lastly, I'm going to create a furniture layer. Remember, the amount of layers is dependent on the complexity of the drawing. So as we're creating quite a simple drawing, you can get probably get away with about three layers. Then I'm going to allocate a color to my layer. So my walls, generally with all of my drawing, my walls are blue. I'm then going to create a green layer color for my windows. And then my furniture on red. Generally, all of my furniture on all of my drawings is red. Right, so once I've done that, I'm going to exit this little command bar or current layer bar, and then I'm going to select the drop down so I can see that all of my layers are there, and they are. Then I'm going to begin drawing. I navigate to my polyline. Remember, you can use any tool, but I'm going to navigate to my polyline. I'm going to make sure that the ortho command at my mode and my model setting is on so that I'm getting nice straight lines. And I'm going to start by typing in the dimension for each line. So that first one was 6,000 millimeters, which is six meters. My second one is 4,000 millimeters, is, which is equivalent to four meters. I'm going to then repeat it so that I have an accurate rectangle. Remember, I've got my snap command on as well, so that it's making sure I'm snapping to the exact correct size. I'm now going to select my rectangle and make sure that it's on the correct layer, which is my walls. Remember, generally, when you start drawing, you're going to start drawing your walls, working outside inwards. Now, all walls have a thickness, don't they? So my thickness is 230, and I'm going to offset that outwards. As you can see, I'm moving away from the internal line. From here, I'm going to start creating that door and window that we spoke about. And remember, they need to be center to the four meter long wall. So to start, I'm going to navigate right back to my polyline tool. As you can see, it's a favorite. 
Select that and I'm going to find the center point. From here, I'm going to start creating my window of a meter by selecting the center and typing in 500 from the center outwards. So you can go about doing this in any way you like. I'm going to then take my rectangle tool and create a rectangle with the guide points that I've created at 500 either side. I'm going to delete the lines that we don't need around that so that we have one rectangle depicting the window. And from here, I'm going to add that to my window layer. I'm now going to just create a little line center to that window because that's typically how we would draw a window and make sure by selecting the layer drop down that it's on my windows layer. Then I'm going to do the same activity for my door. Find the center point and make sure my door is centered to that 400 or 4 meter length wall. I'm going to create a polyline on either side, making sure that I'm getting exactly the width of the door that I need. Delete whatever lines that you don't need or that you're not using, making your drawing neat and clean, and then following that by making sure that my door is on the correct property or the correct layer. As you can see, I'm doing a little bit of a different method for my door and creating a circle and a line because this is generally how one would show a door. So I've used my circle tool, my polyline tool, and now a little bit of an extra tool that we didn't show you. It's called your trim tool. To get your trim tool, you simply type in the word trim on your screen and it allows you to trim away elements on your drawing that you don't need. So this is really super handy and a trick, an additional piece of information that we didn't cover in this lesson. So now you know how to trim. I'm going to select my door and make sure that it's on the doors and windows layer. And there you have it. That is the base for your drawing. From here, I always like to hatch the internal elements on my wall because remember, a plan view is still a section and we hatch in areas that are cut through on a section. So I'm going to select the hatch tool and then select the areas that I want to hatch. I'm going to make sure that the hatch is on the accurate hatch pattern that I want. So in this case, I want a diagonal line. I'm going to change the scale of my line to make sure that it's visible and it suits the size of my drawing as well. There you have it. That is your floor plan. From here, I'm now going to use my annotation tool to add various annotations to my drawing. So we're going to label our drawing. Right, so before we begin, I had actually forgotten to add a layer called annotations to my drawing. So I'm going to my layer property. I'm going to add a new layer called annotations. I'm going to also give that layer a color. I'm choosing pink. Once I've done that, I can exit the layer property and begin annotating. To annotate the drawing, I need to go to the annotation section on my ribbon. So that's exactly what I'm doing. And from here, I'm selecting text and I'm going with multi-line text. I then follow the prompts or the commands and start typing in. I'm giving a label to the bedroom. So I'm going to call it Harry's bedroom and I'm going to give the rough approximate dimensions of that bedroom. So my text is really small. I'm zooming in, double clicking on my text, highlighting it and changing the size of the text so it's more visible on my drawing. I'm going to keep doing this until I've got the right size text or the right font set up for my drawing. Remember, it needs to be neat, clean, simple and tidy. From here, I'm moving the text around the drawing to make sure that it's centered to the drawing. I always like to make sure my, my text is centered and neat and makes sense within the drawing. And there you have it. We've added text to the drawing. From here, I'm going to add dimensions. So we navigate back to the annotation section on the ribbon, select the dimension, and then select and follow the prompts by AutoCAD. So it says select the extension line or area that you're wanting to dimension, which is exactly what I'm doing. All right, so now I'm not happy with my dimension type. I can't see the text and I can't see the arrows. I'm going to modify the dimension type. So I go to annotate. I make sure that the presets are not what I want, or if there are any presets, I can select them. Otherwise, there aren't any in this case. I'm going to manage dimension style and modify the dimension. 
Right, so let's modify our dimension. You navigate to your dimension tab in your annotate section. You select the drop down and then click manage dimension styles because essentially that's what we're wanting to do. You then select the dimension type that you're using within your drawing. So in this case, I'm using ISO-25. You might have a different one. That's fine. Make sure that you've selected that one. And then you're going to select modify. Once you've done that, a modification tab is going to pop up, which allows you to modify the dimension style. So for the purposes of this lesson, and just to keep it nice and simple, we're going to use lines, symbols and arrows and text to modify. And that's all we're going to modify in this exercise. So for our lines, you can go ahead and change the color of your line. You might want to make it red. I'm going to keep mine white for the time being. You can change your line type. So you can select a dash dot or a solid line. You can change your line weight. As you can see, there's a variety of different line weights here. Baseline spacing. You can suppress the dimension line, as you can see. And you know what's really great about this is there's a little live window in the corner here that shows you exactly what your updates look like in real time. So if we're suppressing our extension line or our dimension line, that's what it looks like. If we are unticking that, that's what that's looking like. Remember, we had our extension line. You can remove your extension line or keep them. So I'm going to set mine up like this for the time being. From here, I'm moving to arrows and symbols. You've got a variety of options for your arrows here. So technically and typically, you'd want to keep them as a closed fold arrow. Alternatively, you can look at the architectural oblique. This is quite an architectural looking dimension. Otherwise, if you're wanting something a little bit softer, you can use the dot, but I'm going to keep it as a closed filled arrow because that's what I like and I think that's, I find it the most neat form. From here, I'm going to change my arrow size. So I quite like a 175 millimeter arrow size. Guys, this is totally dependent on the scale of your drawing. So you're definitely going to need to modify this depending on the scale of your drawing. But for now, this is what I'm gonna do. Center marks, I'm leaving. Right, that all looks good to me. I'm now moving to text. My text is currently pink because I have made it pink. You can make it blue. You could make it red. I'm going to leave mine magenta. I like that. I'm going to change my text height to 200. Remember, we always want to be able to see the text clearly. The person reading the drawing needs to be able to see the text. And when I say text, we are referring to the number or the numerical value above. From here, you can decide if you want your text centered to the line or to sit slightly above the line. There's a variety of options here you can choose from. Just for neatness, I'm going to keep it above my line. And these additional commands I'm going to leave for the time being. There you have it. Once you've changed your dimension style and you're happy with it, you're then going to select OK and close. And you'll see your dimension in your drawing automatically updates to suit that style. Once I'm happy with the dimension line, I make sure that it's set to the correct layer, which is my annotation layer. And then from here, I carry on dimensioning my drawing. As you can see, the dimensions are all in the same line. All of the dimensions on one side of the drawing all need to follow a very similar line. You don't want them jumping all over the place. I make sure that they're all connected to each other so that it's neat, clean and tidy. And as you can see, I'm dimensioning each area or each wall of the drawing, making sure that whoever's reading the drawing knows exactly what size each wall is and each opening is. Once I've done that, I'm selecting all of those dimensions and adding them to the correct layer, which is my annotative layer. There you have it. We've dimensioned and annotated our drawing. Before we exit or before we end our drawing, we need to save and print. Let's take a look at how we go about doing that. A vital tip here, save, 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 and save again. This is something that you're going to want to write down. Remember, keep it somewhere, save your drawings. Navigate to the application menu. And you're going to find the drop down where it says save. It's automatically going to save to the same location that you've previously saved the drawing. From here, I'd like to print my drawing. So printing, remember, in AutoCAD can also refer to plotting. Back to the application menu, select print, and I'm going to plot my drawing. A plot print command box is now going to pop up once I've selected that, and it's going to give me all of the various options that I need to change my printing or plotting style. So I'm going to start off by selecting 
DWG to PDF, which means I'm going to print or plot my drawing to a PDF. Alternatively, you'll have a variety of printers set up there for you relating to your printers. Now I'm going to select the paper size I want to print to. So as you can see, there's a variety of paper sizes here. You need to select the one that suits you best. In our case, because our drawing small, I'm going for A4. Now I need to select what to plot. So I'm going to click the drop down. As you can see, there's a variety of options here, like extents, limits. I'm going to select window. I'm then going to draw a window on the, across the drawing that I'm wanting to plot or print. I'm going to make sure that it's landscape, so it takes up majority of the page. And then I'm clicking print preview, and that'll give me a preview of what I'm printing. From here, I'm going to select plot styles. I'm going to click grayscale, and that will eliminate all of the color on my drawing, which is exactly what we want to do. Generally, you don't want a whole lot of color on your drawing, as you can see there. So I'm going to keep it to grayscale. Once I've done that, I'm going to preview one last time. Remember, previewing is great. And then I'm going to select OK. Once I've selected OK, it's going to prompt me where to save the drawing. I'd like to save it to my desktop. I'm going to keep the same name as the drawing file. And then I'm going to click OK. And as you can see in the corner there, it says plot and publish job complete which means that we have successfully plotted our drawing. Well done, everyone. Our first AutoCAD drawing. With that being said, and having covered all of the interesting facts and tools and lessons about AutoCAD, let's do a quick recap of lesson five. In today's lesson, we discussed and applied the annotation tool. We discussed and applied the layer tool. And lastly, we built on our AutoCAD skill set. Well done, an extremely difficult lesson but one that we've passed with flying colors. And that, as you all know, brings us to our challenge. For today's challenge, I would like you to apply the skills and tricks learned in lessons three, four, and five to create a floor plan on AutoCAD.